did some work with him. Um, I mean, as far as when we were doing Ozone, I would have the opportunity to kind of just tag along with him um, with certain rap lot stuff. And then I ended up uh, helping him with his, his book release in 2018. Yeah, yeah I was yeah. live. I, I seen that. I seen the, the art and science of respect. respect um, you yeah. know, I think he had seen um, what I did with the Pimp with C, the Pimp C. Mm -hmm. project. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we gonna talk. You, uh, I seen you on Drink Champs with Jay Prince. How mm -hmm. how did you and him formulate a relationship as far as, you know, just a business type or whatnot? Um, just give me the history on how you guys linked up. Um, well, I guess around the time Ozone started really expanding, because like we, we started in 2002, but we were pretty much just in Florida. Um, um, so Ozone started in 2002, but we were very like, Central Florida focus and okay. we didn't have any money. So it was like, however many issues we can print up, that's however many we're gonna put out. So the way we started expanding was that um, I would be surprised, like I put I put a few magazines in a box in Miami in a box in Tampa and we wouldn't really get a, a huge response like from the big cities, like, you know, somewhere like Miami, they've got three radio stations and they've got newspapers and they have outlets. But what surprised me was that like, for example, like that first, you know, we put a box out in Tampa and we started just getting all these calls from Tampa, whether it was DJs or, or artists or, you know, people who had stores that wanted to advertise like stores like yours. Um, so cities like that, once we started really traveling a lot like cities like Tampa or Birmingham or Mobile like they yeah, didn't have that, you know the artists in those cities they didn't it's very hard to get on you right. know the clear channel station or whatever is not going to play right. mm -hmm. you know rich boys trying to come out of Mobile Man. or you know somebody like that who really does have some some movement and has a fan base but there's not really at, and back then there wasn't Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and all that so they wouldn't really have a platform to Correct. you know put themselves out there especially visually you know we, we take things like YouTube for granted but back then like you know plies or somebody like that would have a mixtape come out right. everybody would be playing it mm -hmm. but not know what he looks like or right. you know not really have like that visual aspect so i guess i'm getting off track from your question okay. but um it's okay i'm just glad you're talking so, so so we started we had this map on the front of ozone and it was supposed to represent our our where we were distributed and people started we started getting these angry calls because we, we weren't in texas yet but so the map didn't have texas and so people would always call and send us right. feedback like how are you are you saying this is the south like how are you not including texas so for me i i don't think i had really traveled you know to texas at that point so i didn't understand like the culture and the the reach that you guys have here because right. you you're really very kind of insulated but also have a huge you know mm -hmm. um, distribution network right. well i learned a lot even researching the pimp c book i learned I, I learned a lot about uh was it southwest um yeah south by southwest. southwest no not the not the conference but the um the distribution network. Oh yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's South. It, it, that's in Houston, isn't it? You yeah. Know? Well, they're, I don't think they exist anymore. They don't know but, more. But they, they were UGK was actually the first right. like independent project that they distributed, and so I interviewed a lot of artists who would talk about how they really weren't pursuing major label deals because they could distribute in Texas and sell like 150,000 albums. So why would you go and give you know exactly. a big chunk of your income away? Mm -hmm. So. Texas had a this huge network, but it it also was like kind of closed off to other. It was very insulated. Um, so, I say all that to say, we started uh, like every month we would get the the magazines. I would literally like I had I think I had like a Corolla back when I first mm -hmm. started. Out. So we would have like twenty boxes of magazines. And you and drove. It would, be, it would just be on the ground, and so we would drive. We had to we had a sort of like independent distributors. Right. So it would be somebody like it might be somebody like you who has a store and you have you know, people in the community right. come in mm -hmm. or it might be like a DJ or a radio station. So we would just go city to city every month and, you know, hey, come meet me at the Chevron. I got a box mm -hmm. for you. You know, so that's how the distribution, you know, okay. started out because we tried to get in the beginning when I tried to get an actual magazine distributor, they weren't, you know, mm -hmm. they were like, what is this? This is, you know, it's a street right. magazine. Um, so rap lot around the time that we started distributing in Texas was around the same time that I think that they had a deal with uh, was it Asylum? I think it was like yeah, through yeah. Asylum, Warner. Because Rapalot was kind of, you know, of course they were very known like on the streets. And, oh yeah, and, they've been and, around. They in Texas, again. but they also, they, they weren't, prior to that, I don't think they were doing a lot of like national press, like they didn't really have a, a market, they weren't really like mm -hmm. marketing it in the same way that major labels did. So once they linked up with Asylum, you know, that put them kind of under the Warner umbrella. And labels back then would do a lot of like press junkets where they would reach out to, you know, all these different, um, media outlets and, and just really put a push mm -hmm. behind the album release. So around the time we started doing a lot of stuff in Texas was when um, I think they put out uh, definitely the Pimp C solo album. 
I'm going to be honest, this is going back, to 15, That's a ways back. 15 yeah. years or so. So I'm trying to remember all the specifics. But around like 05 is when I started coming out here a lot. So there was, you know, this is when Mike Jones was dropping. Yeah. And Paul Shout Wall out Mike Jones, Paul Wall who? and my guys. Who? <laughs> you said Jones. Mike Jones. <laughs> I know. Who? I know. I know Y'all silly, man. man. Y'all make me sick <laughs> right now. <laughs> what so, uh, what well, did I'm you think about? Who was, who was, I'm not sure which were, which were rap a lot, but around that time, like 05, there was a lot of material coming mm -hmm. out. Swisher House you know, um, rap a lot that was previously, of course, they had been putting material out, but it wasn't getting like the national kind of look. And so yeah. since we were kind of in that system at that time, like Atlantic and Warner and Asylum would, you know, reach out to us. So, mm -hmm. um, so that's when I started doing a lot of stuff with, uh, with rap a lot. And so of course I would, you know, Jay is very, For um, sure. I, I mean, I love the fact Respect. that you know, Jay is always out. Like he, so right. that's how he, he works. knows what's going on. Yeah, like he he's, works. He's, he's knows what's ground. going on. Like he's not, you know, a lot of executives, you know, kind of will fall back and they'll, they'll just Not be him. up in their their mansion or whatever. Nah. But he, he'll he'll be in the streets and, mm -hmm. and really know what's going on. So. I think you have to when um, you when you like like he was he's always been the guy the go to guy and, mm -hmm. and, and and so you have to know what's going on and I believe he was able to speak to it throughout the years mm -hmm. probably better than anybody else could you know when he come down to hip hop especially when yeah I mean I, I really learned a lot working with him and just just uh, being able to you know kind of observe and see how he handles business and stuff like that so correct I, I did some work with him him um i mean as far as when we were doing ozone i would have the opportunity to kind of just tag along with him um with certain rap lot stuff and then i ended up uh helping him with his his book release in 2018 yeah, yeah i was yes, live i, I seen that. i seen the, that. the art and science of respect, respect um, yeah. you know, i think he had seen um what i did with the pimp, with C, the pimp C project mm -hmm. and you know he had, obviously he had all kinds of avenues to put a book out through a major exactly. you know through a major publisher but he was weighing the options like could i just put it out myself and so that's what i so he self-published yeah, so, well, basically, well, I, I, I basically helped him set up a rap -a -lot, um arm, you know, a publishing arm to actually put the book out. So he was able to keep it all in-house. We did everything, you know, the whole design and um, the whole release and everything. And I, I told him, you know, I, I felt like it fit the rap -a -lot, you know, rather than you just going and getting a check from somebody right. and then you don't really have full control over the project. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what they had been doing the whole time, all those years with the music. So it made sense to, to do that with the book. And, and so at that, that time you had so much knowledge where that was concerned just to be able to teach him and tell him exactly what to do. Yeah, I mean, I had you. learned a lot um, about the publishing side of it. Mm -hmm. And so we were able to, to put it out independently and have full control over it. And um, then I helped him put together the, the marketing for it. So we mm -hmm. ended up, I think originally it was going to be like a three week tour and it turned into like three and a half months. You know, he, he did tons of press mm -hmm. oh yeah he was everywhere he was everywhere yeah yeah we on boss talk one-on-one one-on-one yeah we gonna talk